Hey everyone! Today we are going to talk about what is JSX. And before we will start, remember to subscribe our channel with the red button down there and to give us thumbs up. And if you are watching this on social media, link to the full video you will find there or there. everyone! As I mentioned a few seconds before, today we are going to talk about what is JSX. So, if you are a beginner front-end developer and you started to create your first applications, probably after you learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you started with frameworks. And the most like popular front-end framework and one of the most beginner-friendly is React.js. So, you are installing your first project with React.js or Create React App. And by the way, if you don't know what is Create React App, check it in our previous video. I will put you the card above. So, you've created your first project with Create React App, for example. You are opening the code and what you see there? Some kind of strange extension for components. And what's that extension? JSX. So, in this video, I'm going to tell you what is JSX, this weird thing from React, why we are using that, what it simplifies, and why it's so good. Let's start. So, what is JSX? JSX is kind of React.js specific syntax, which allows us to create HTML with power of JavaScript. In other words, we can say that it's kind of the templating language with possibility of creating inside JavaScript. So here in the table, we have the example of React.js component. I hope it's readable. So, inside the render function, we return some template. In our case, it's just simple h3, and it looks like HTML. There is one difference with the class name, but about that I will tell in a second. And we have some text, and we have the h3 title. This is what we create as JSX. But what happens next? So, React Engine transpiles this JSX code to pure JavaScript and calls this part as a normal function. In a second, I will tell you what's the result in JavaScript. I'll actually show you, but I need a few minutes to write it on the board. Okay, so right now on the table you can see what is the result of JSX code template. In our example, it was the title. So React creates uh, create uses create element method, and inside that method we have parts of our JSX like h3, which means that it will create h3 element inside the DOM. Then we have the class name and the what's inside our HTML tag. This thing is put it into the DOM object and displayed to the user. So, why JSX is better to use? So, first of all, it helps to create back free content because React.js transpiles this JSX to HTML and if there is any bug, something doesn't work, it just returns the error and we go, can't render our, our view. Next thing is that it's faster than just JavaScript because while it's transpiling, then it also performs the optimization. And the last thing is that it allows us to create logic and templates in the same components without creating a huge mess. So, at the end of this section, I will also tell you what JSX stands for, because it's kind of a mystery for a lot of beginners. And JSX means JavaScript XML. Great, well, let's go to the next point.
So, right now let me tell you what is JSX used for. We already know that it's used for creating templates inside React.js components, but why developers use it? So, the main reason is simplicity. Let's take a look at two code examples. One is with JSX and the other one is without JSX in pure JavaScript. So, this one we are just putting some HTML similar code. It seems like it's pretty short, understandable, everything seems clear. And without JSX, the second example seems a little bit more confusing. It seems difficult, code is longer, and you really need to understand what's inside. So, that's why a lot of people use JSX, although React.js doesn't force us to do it. If you prefer, you can create your React.js components using the second method without JSX. Right now, I'm going to tell you about four loops in JSX. Let's see in a minute. So, how to loop inside JSX? It's one of the most common questions you can find in the internet about JSX. In some cases, maybe you would like to do it. So, let's imagine that you want to render array of items inside JSX uh, code. So, maybe, yeah, maybe you want to take the array, uh, inter iterate through the array and return some list of items. You can do it, like in the code here. So, we have array with children, later we can iterate through this array and push each list item with our child to the children list, which we can later return inside the return statement. Should be children list, so sorry for mistake. But there is a lot, lot, lot easier solution. And in, in React.js and in JSX we can use map. What is map? Map is JavaScript method that allows us to uh, iterate through the array, change the array by the given function, and return the new array with the kind of results. So yeah, we can do it with JSX and I will show you how. So. Here is a much simpler version of iterating through array of elements inside JSX. Let me explain one by one. We have our children array, Peter John, great. And we have return function. Inside the return function we have the parent element for our children. Then we simply use map method, we are taking the value which is Peter and the index of each element which we will use as a key. And after that we just return list items. Much simpler, right? Okay, right now let's talk about the biggest differences between pure HTML and JSX. So, as I told you, JSX is used to create templates, which means that we can create lists, divs, images and stuff like that. And also HTML is created to create divs, lists, images and stuff like that. So right now let's take a look at JSX and HTML and let's try to find the biggest differences between them and compare a little bit. So the first and like the most uh, common difference that you will see as the beginner is that whenever you are creating using JSX you always have to have a parent element. If you want to create list which won't have like uh, an ordered list uh, tag, but I don't know, three divs as a symbol, as a symbolix for example, you always need to add parent div above them. In HTML, you can easily create siblings separately. They don't have to have parent element all the time. All depends how you want to them to be visible, but with JSX it's necessary, otherwise your code won't compile and you will see the error. The second thing is about class name and class. 
In HTML, we are using class keyword to put some class names, uh, which will be used later for styling in CSS or SAS or less, whatever you are using, of course. And inside JSX, this class keyword was already taken. So developers of React.js and JSX had to find another solution. That's why they selected the class name keyword, which is used inside elements in JSX to put their classes, which can be used later in CSS. And the third difference is about self-closing tags and opening and closing tags. In HTML, we have a few elements which can have self-closing tags. This is, for example, image, uh, it's this line break, the simple one, and in case of JSX, all elements might have self-closing tags if they don't have children inside. So we can create div as a self-closing tag, we can create input as a self-closing tag, and it's no problem, even sometimes React will tell you, hey, this element doesn't have child, so create a self-closing tag. Okay, right now let's find out about JSX and TypeScript. The last thing that I want to tell you today about JSX is how we can use it with TypeScript. So creating React.js applications with TypeScript is becoming pop more and more popular and many, many developers, companies use this approach right now because, of course, TypeScript has advantages, has a lot of advantages and it's better to write applications sometimes in TypeScript than in JavaScript. But we are not talking about TypeScript advantages right now. So, what you can do to use JSX with TypeScript? That's pretty easy. All that changes in this case is just the extension of your component files. Instead of JSX, you are putting TSX and coding in a similar way. I hope you find this video very useful, especially as a beginner who starts with React and maybe don't understand all those new things which are like a lot, a lot, a lot. If you want to find out more about React, don't forget to check out our playlist with React.js for beginners. I will put you card and link so you will find it really easy. And if you didn't uh, have time to see all the code or you maybe didn't see it good from the whiteboard, you can always visit our blog and see the written version of this video. I will link below. If you don't subscribe our channel yet, remember to do it with the red button down there because there will be more React.js videos. And if you like it, remember about thumbs up and leaving us some comments so it will be nice for us. Also, don't forget to check out our social media for some great content. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!